So, this is 10 minutes with, in this case, Christopher Dorn, the president of IDEA International Osaka, Japan. A very uh, good morning in this case to you. Good morning, it's great to be here. And it's great to have you. And uh, actually, you will be uh, sharing knowledge uh, about doing business in uh, Asia. Uh, you're located in uh, Japan. And uh, well, we prepared several questions uh, for you. Uh, and we start off uh, right away. Um, in every country, there are different demands. Um, and how do we best reach out when we talk about uh, graphic design and graphic content uh, in, in, in the Asian region? Well, I think that a lot of Asian countries, they really want to see, you know, everything within the graphics. They don't necessarily want, you know, a simple, clean, just basic tagline like what you would find in Europe or in the United States. They want more. They want to see more. They want to see more details within the graphics and the information that you're, you're presenting. Right. Hey, and some cultures will prefer clean lines and, and, and very linear, uh, linear design, whereas others might be looking for gimmicky uh, giveaways or uh, prizes and contests. How might you suggest an uh, exhibit would well be well received in your country? Well, I think specifically for Japan, you know, gimmicks are still used. Um, they use various things like uh, booth talent to hand out brochures, etc., to pass along information to attendees. Um, so it is, you know, received uh, fairly well. Suppose you, 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 your company has a lot of real products, actual the touchable uh, products. Uh, would you be obliged to, to, to bring everything or could you go more on the conceptual way in the region? I think most countries in Asia, they want to see everything. I think they want to see that everything in the kitchen sink. Uh, I think it's really important to have a complete uh, product line available and just show everything that you have. A lot of countries in Asia are quite growing quite rapidly. They want to see everything that you have. So you bring, really bring everything? So you, well, you might need a bigger booth than, uh, than, than normal? Mm, yeah, I think for a lot of times, even if it's a small booth, even if it's only a three by three, you know, shell scheme, we often see, you know, clients putting a lot of graphics up, just packing in as much information as possible, putting as many products as they can on the counters within the space. All right, and, and, and suppose we have only uh, services to show, how, how do we present it in the region, more in a graphical way or a textual way? I think it would be in a graphical way and also presentations specifically describing what that particular service might be with the presentation, etc. All right, and, and, and then we are at the exhibition, the clients are uh, there. Um, is there any selling or is it uh, just meeting people and, and setting up future uh, meetings? Uh, for the most part, I, there isn't that much selling that's actually done on the show floor. There's uh, meetings that are set up. Uh, typically what happens is you might have a, a potential customer come into your space. Um, they want to see your product. They want to learn about it. They'll take some information. They'll bring it back to their particular superiors and then try to set up a meeting with somebody that's also so let's say a vice president or some type of uh, executive and focus that meeting but not selling on the show floor that's going to be after uh, the show and at their office for example yeah let me get into that because I, I, I heard a story that that where the sometimes uh, two or three parties from the same company come so they have these people who come first and then uh, some superior managers come and then uh, on the third day the real people come is that uh, is, is it a true story that is very true that is very true the, the, the length of the relationship, relationships are very important and building relationships, um, Japan specific for example, um, building those relationships take a lot of time, a lot of time. Yeah, whereas in, in, in Europe and in America sometimes, well, the, the, the real boss comes at the first day and he decides, but that is not the case in uh, Asia. No, that's not the case in Asia. It, quite, it can take years to build up relationships and that's one of the things that I think a few American clients or even European clients, they test out the show, they test the waters, they go to the show and they say, ah, the show didn't go well. And so they, they fail to go the next year and follow up. And that's what actually, for example, Japanese customers want to see. They want to see a dedication or a commitment within a certain industry. They want to you know, see you year after year. And it takes time. It really does. And when you provide your services in the, in the region, like uh, in, in, in America, they, they you want to have it like a full service package in Europe, you just deliver the stand and then probably it's okay. How about uh, in the region here? Yeah, for the most part, I mean, it's a turnkey, you know, proposal. So we're providing, um, you know, whether uh, customers from Europe or from the United States, they want to have, you know, the booth, the show services. They also want to have those extra services, uh, a little bit of extra peace of mind, if you will, with having somebody on site every morning to make sure the booth or the stand, if you will, is up and running. 
shipping challenges. How do we get our stuff there? Sorry? I don't want to talk about shipping. shipping. So, so that's a real challenge? It's a, it's a challenge. I mean, it, it, there's so many different facets involved in, you know, the APAC region, which we cover, it, you know, covers, you know, 20 some countries and going in between country to country. Every country has its own specific rules. There are certain uh, materials or products that um, are not allowed, for example. And it's just really important. It's just really important that you're working with uh, a shipping agent, a freight forwarder, that has experience within that particular country that can be quite transparent with you if you're going to ship, how long it's going to take, what type of documentation you need to have to make sure you don't get into a situation where it's stuck in customs and nobody knows when it's going to be released and nobody knows when you can actually deliver it to the trade show. Christopher, this is sharing knowledge. You're giving us a lot of, uh, a lot of knowledge, so let's, let's move on uh, quickly. Uh, and I know you can talk for ages about regulations in the region. Regulations vary between each individual country, but I think the one thing that's really uh, imperative to know, for example, is to make sure that your booth, your stand that has been designed meets various regulations from the venue. Some venues may not allow rigging, and as you know, within the United States and in Europe, rigging from the, the venue ceiling is quite common. It's actually not as common within Asia, and so when you're thinking about designing the particular stand um, you know, from the creative standpoint. Don't look at you know utilizing the ceiling because a lot of times you cannot. Everything has to be floor supported. So those types of regulations are really important to follow. All right, thank you. And, and now and when we look at the booth itself, uh, I mean, do, what kind of hospitality do we expect? Do we have greeters? Do we have, uh, do we serve alcohol? How, how, when the show is running, what, uh, what do we do there? And what is typical Asian? Typical Asian, I mean, alcohol in itself, um, for example, is uh, kind of frowned upon within Japan, uh, but within China it's actually open to, you know, it's received very well. Um, but it, You're smiling. Yeah, I'm smiling, but it, it depends on the actual show. So if it's an auto show, it might have, you might have catering, etc. When it comes to uh, booth hospitality, you will have that. Um, it's just really keen to make sure that you are representing your company with, you know, a hostess or a host or what have you that can speak the local language, that can also cater towards the attendees and the clients, potential clients that are coming to your space. Yeah, and, and, and finally we have to pay for stuff. Uh, how do we do that? Credit card or cash? Uh, mostly by wire transfer. Credit cards are becoming uh, more common depending on which country you're in, of course. Uh, Australia credit cards are quite commonly accepted, uh, even in Singapore. But uh, countries like China and Japan, it's, you know, sometimes yes, sometimes no. A lot of times wire transfer is the only way. Even cash sometimes, if you haven't paid for that particular electrical bill, the organizer will come by the official contractor and say, hey, where is our payment? And they will expect and demand cash on site. Okay, well, we're at the end of our uh, 10 minutes and, and um, people might want to know more. Uh, how do they go about, what, where do we find more information about the specific region? I would say looking into various associations within Asia, but what I would first do is go to IFAS. If you have a particular question, just go through you know, the IFAS uh, Association organization. A lot of people have a lot of knowledge uh, and can be very helpful in that regard. Each individual country has um, specific exhibition, messe type of associations. But one of the probably the most helpful things to do is actually reach out to the show organizer and ask them specific questions. Um, um, and get that particular information that you're looking for, the type of attendee, uh, the overall makeup of the, the audience that's going to the show, the other types of, you know, maybe your competitors, um, et cetera. That's the best thing to do. Well, I, on, on, on that bombshell, I would say uh, thank you very much, uh, Christopher, for sharing uh, knowledge, and uh, we'll see each other the next time.